I'm Lana. Joining me is Dries van Langenhoff to discuss his group, Shield and Friends, a youthful Flemish nationalist group interested in preserving their heritage, interested in preserving Europe for the Europeans, Flanders for the Flemish, Hungary for the Hungarians, Sweden for the Swedes. What's so wrong with that? Nothing. Dries also met Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary recently, so we'll talk all about it. Dries, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us about your group, Shield and Friends, and what you have going on. Well, Shield and Vrinden, uh, translated to Shield and Friends, is a uh, very young movement. It was founded one year ago in Belgium, more particularly in uh, Flanders, the northern part of Belgium. And it's an independent metapolitical movement uh, based on identitarian and family values. What we try to do is uh, promote role models uh, promote uh, being being proud of who you are in your country, of your nation. Uh, and we try to do this in a positive way. So our actions are not negative. We don't go out and shout or, or, or uh, destroy other, other things. What we try to do is promote a positive message. We help the elderly. We donate blood. We clean up litter. We try to be uh, model citizens. We try to promote a positive message. Yeah, so if anyone comes out against that, they look pretty bad, you know, if you're like helping clean up the streets, helping old people, if they want to say something yeah. against you, not still, a good look, right? Still, they go against it. Like <laughs> uh, only two days ago um, in Ghent, one of the most beautiful cities of Flanders, uh, there was a strike um, by the services that have to collect the, the litter. So uh, the whole... <laughs> The whole old city center was uh, filled with litter, which was rotting in the streets. The smell was horrible. And some people were suggesting that the military had to clean it up. So what we did with Schild and Vrinden was we said, no, the military is here for our safety and we will clean it up in, in their place. So we went and cleaned up, cleaned up the litter. And even though we did like a positive thing, people were still saying, well, the, the yeah, left yeah. people were saying, Call the police. They, they are stealing litter. Oh, That's what litter so. oh gosh. I, I don't see how they can win over more people with that kind of attitude, really. <laughs> oh, they won't, but that's a good thing, of course. Yeah, of course. Well, I want to play a video I first found out about you from this uh, activism video. Now, normally you don't do a lot of activism, but let's play it because I think a lot of people saw this and made the rounds. And I think YouTube was pulling it down, too. So we'll play it. Very nice. So tell us about what happened afterwards after this video was released. Well, it went completely viral uh, above our expectations. So in less than 24 hours, it was shared over a million times. Great. Um, these shares were distributed amongst uh, several videos because it was banned a few times uh, for hate speech. It went off of YouTube, off of Facebook, off of Twitter. But uh, the good thing is that amongst the right wing community, we know this will happen. So we, we download it, we spread it on several accounts. Uh, and that works because, uh, as I said, it was viewed tens of millions of times uh, around the world. So we inspired a lot of other fellow nationalists, which is, of course, a good thing. Now, you met Viktor Orban, which is pretty huge. So tell us how that happens. Well, you'd have to know a little bit about the Flemish situa situation. So uh, in Belgium, there's uh, six to seven million uh, Flemish and there's also um, a Walloon minority. They speak French, we speak Dutch. There's a lot of political differences between the two uh, language groups. And uh, we have a sort of self-government for the Flemish in Belgium. Now in Romania, there's a very big Hungarian minority and they uh, are also interested in self-government. So what they did was they invited a Flemish delegation of Schild and Vrinden to come and talk about this self-government in Flanders and to come and talk about the political situation and the cultural decline in the West of Europe. Now, this was at Tusvanias festival in, um, as I said, the Hungarian uh, uh, region in Romania, where there's a huge uh, Hungarian minority. And uh, in this festival, uh, Viktor Orban also gave a very, very strong and good speech. And um, his entourage invited us to meet him, to talk with him about the situation in the West of Europe, about how fellow nationalists in Europe can work together. That's excellent. I'm going to play a little clip from that. En de Hongaarse premier Orbán heeft de Vlaamse actiegroep Schild en Vrienden met open armen ontvangen op een festival in Hongarije. Hij zei dat ze in actie moeten komen, anders zal België er binnen enkele jaren dramatisch anders uitzien. 
Did Victor Orban say anything interesting when you guys were alone with him? Did he give you any advice or any input on things? What happened there? He said a lot of interesting things, but the main interesting point uh, which he said was something I've been saying for quite a few years as well. And that's that we first, in order to be able to change things, we have to believe and accept that we can change things. Because the big problem in, for example, Flanders is that a lot of people uh, oppose this uncontrolled massive migration. But the problem is they don't realize that they can actually change it. They've been told by the media, by academics, by leftist politicians, by Marxists, that this uh, massive immigration, this multiculturalism is a fact, that it's, it's, it's just progression, it's just the future and we have to accept it, but we don't. We can and we will and we must change this. And realizing that this change is possible when we look at Italy with Salvini or when we look at uh, Austria with FPÖ and, and Kurz, if we look at uh, the Central European, uh, the Visegrad countries, we can see that this change is possible and it is coming. And the first step for us to achieve this change is to believe in it. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Now, I'm actually quite hopeful for a lot of the youths in Europe because I feel that the, the rebellion is against leftism, is against multiculturalism. Are you seeing a lot of that? Even women re revolting against feminism. What are you seeing when you're out there meeting other people in Europe? Well, I'm seeing this, this changing. The, the, the first thing we have to do is promote role models on the conservative right-wing side. Because it's very easy, it has been very easy to be left-wing for the past decades because all the big media personalities, all the singers, they were left-wing. And if they were right-wing, they would just not talk about politics because they knew that if they talk about right-wing politics, they would be smeared and slandered by, by the media. But what we are doing right now on the right wing is we're showing that, hey, I'm right wing and you can be too without being slandered by everyone, without losing your friends as we were told by the media. That's what we have to do. And, and I can see this changing amongst the youth. Like in, in Ghent, which is a very big university city in Flanders, I've been elected by thousands of other students into the uh, Board of Governors of Ghent University. So that's also a very important step. Thousands of students saying we've had enough of this cultural Marxist indoctrination and we want someone who dares to say it, mm -hmm. say it where it matters. And that's a very big step as well. People are, are really realizing that they can stand up to this. Oh, yeah. And even though right now it's quite hard to come out and say in the open, at least in Western Europe, I'm a right wing conservative, I oppose mass migration. We still have to do it because there's a silent majority that opposes massive migration and they will only step out when we show them the way. Absolutely. Well, actually, it's happening in America, too, and Canada and Australia, everywhere. Pretty much if you're on the right and you say we don't want Europeans to be replaced in the countries their ancestors built, you get slandered in the press, you get censored, you get banned, your, you know, PayPal will shut you down. I mean, these things are real. And have you been experiencing any of that? yourself with your group yeah i've been experiencing quite a lot so the media is 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 quite different on, on us from time to time sometimes they're positive because they realize that we we are very popular amongst the flemish public so when they they write an article about us they they know that they will get a lot of readers but on the other hand uh, most of the journalists in belgium and almost all of the big media outlets are left-wing so they're not going to make uh, any good publicity about us but other than that, I feel that we are truly changing things. And, and we see that because the forces that oppose us are doing everything they can to, to censor us. I've been banned from Facebook multiple times. Our, our Facebook page has been blocked. Our videos are being removed constantly. We had a crowdfunding uh, a campaign a few weeks ago and uh, we had almost 10,000 euros in 24 hours. And then the crowdfunding was deleted by GoFundMe. So a lot of these things happen constantly, but the left wing thing that will make us weaker, but it will only make us stronger. We are growing every day in numbers and we will not stop before we've achieved what we want. I agree 100 percent. Now, thinking back to how the borders opened in your point of view, how did we get here? Who really was instigating opening the borders and bringing in cultural Marxism? I don't know if you've looked that deep into it. I have. And what I believe is that 1968, at least in the future, will be regarded as a real turning point for Europe. A turning point that might even uh, be considered in the future quite as important as a world war. The 1968 has changed Europe from the ground up. It has 
changed the basis of our civilization. We have lost uh, the, the proudness of our heritage. We have lost our, our cultural identity. We have lost this feeling of being Europeans. They've replaced this feeling of a nation, this feeling of a home with individualism. They've changed our, our national identity with being citizens of the world. But this is only making us unhappy. They, they, they want people to only think about themselves instead of thinking about a family. But what we, what we see now is record numbers in people who take antidepressants, record numbers in people who take their own lives. People are being unhappy. They are, they are uh, living in solitude. And we want to change that. We want to change this 1968 mentality back to the mentality we, uh, that we, we should have, a mentality of being proud Europeans, of being proud of who we are, of being happy and healthy. And it's funny when you do that, like in places like Hungary and Poland, who have a lot of ethnic pride, they're more nationalistic, they're experiencing a baby boom, people are happier, the economy is doing better, right? Yeah, but the answer you get in, in Western Europe is, but have you looked at the minimum wage in Hungary? It's quite lower than here. <laughs> they, they, they are not able to buy the new iPhone in the first week that it's come out. Oh, brother. That, mm -hmm. That's how people in the West uh, perceive happiness, just in a materialistic sense and not in the sense of family values, of, of the happiness of seeing your children grow. And, and that's what we see. Belgium right now is record number in uh, people uh, being unhealthy, of, people being overweight, they are record numbers in people not wanting children. So uh, that's, that's quite bad. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's getting us at the basis of our civilization. They are, they are getting us at what, what should be our future. And for years they told us, oh, but the environment, you know, you have to have a small, tiny footprint and hardly be there. And now they're saying, oh, we need new blood. So we need to bring in migrants because you people aren't having children and you need someone to yeah. pay your retirement, which is a bunch of BS, of course. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's quite easy to be a leftist because they never have to base their arguments on facts. <laughs> they only base their arguments on feelings. So if you show them evidence that uh, of these migrants, uh, only a few, uh, only a small percentage works after tens of years, then they will just say, ah, I'm not looking at this because it's morally superior to invite millions of illegal immigrants than to just look at the facts, at the research of the scientific evidence that this is not working. Multiculturalism is not working. These migrants are not paying our pensions. These migrants are not the new blood we need. So that's, uh, it's terrible, but it's changing. People are realizing that we have to look at the facts and not at the feelings. Yeah, exactly. Now you spent time Central Europe, Eastern Europe. How is it different from Western Europe? Because I mean, I've traveled through there too, and just they're like different people, different mentality. It's, it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's very different. You can't really compare them. And what I believe, and I'm talking uh, against my own my own nation right now, but what I believe is that uh, there's really two different Europes. You have Western Europe, and we've uh, had very easy times since the golden 60s. We've, we've had it easy. We have had everything we wanted. We've been rich. We 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 had it easy, and that's created weak generations. Mm. While in, in Eastern and Central Europe, they've literally lived under communism. They've experienced danger. They've experienced a authoritarian state that controls the minds with real thought police. They've experienced hunger. And these hard times have created strong generations in Central Eastern Europe. And you see the result today because the generations that are uh, at the power level in Eastern and Central Europe, they are, they are saying no. Hungary is for the Hungarians, Poland is for the Polish. And what we see in the West is uh, our country is for everyone. It's for the whole world to come and take our wealth. Diversity. Right. Yeah. Oh, but other than that, the big difference in mentality is also the political correctness. Like in, in, in Flanders, in Belgium, in Western Europe, there's a lot of topics that can't really be debated. There's a lot of taboos and political correctness, while in Eastern and Central Europe, there's really a free debate. You can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. And that's something I, I really liked uh, going there. Now, tell us about the state of Belgium. I mean, what, what is going on there? Because <laughs> I actually drove in through there before and I couldn't believe what I saw. I mean, it looked like a Muslim country. Driving there was pretty much impossible. It's like anything goes. We went through Antwerp. There was literally a bank robbery happening when we were driving through. Ugh. So what is going on there? Well, there's a lot going on in Belgium. Uh, 
when you talk about migration, as I, as I heard in the question, there's a lot going on, especially in our cities. So there's uh, no go zones in our cities where police and where, uh, where uh, the help services can't even come. So when they go there, they, they are, uh, they are uh, pounded with rocks, they are attacked, they are, their uh, um, equipment is getting stolen. So it's very dangerous for them even to go into these zones where there's huge Muslim, uh, Muslim populations. For an example, the most wanted terrorist uh, from the Paris attacks was able to just sit in Brussels for months with all the neighbors knowing, with, uh, with everyone knowing in the neighborhood, and the, the Belgian police just couldn't go there. And when they finally found out he was there, uh, the police went over there and they were, uh, they were attacked by the whole neighborhood. <laughs> so that paints a, a very realistic image of some of the neighborhoods in Brussels, in Antwerp, and in other major cities of Belgium. Now, what do you think the solution is? The solution is very difficult. Uh, what I try to emphasize on is, is not just put the blame on, on foreigners, on people who migrated to Belgium, because uh, the, the real cause of this misery we're in right now is us Western Europeans being weak to some extent. We've let these people in. Uh, Angela Merkel has said, we're shuffling us, come to Europe. They have promised these people uh, wealth. They have promised these people a peaceful and good life. But when these migrants arrive in Europe, they see that this, this fairy tale is just not true. They get with uh, a lot of them uh, with each other, and the money is not coming out of the walls like most of them believe. And, and that's that's causing a lot of frustrations. Frustrations I can understand to some extent, and these frustrations translate into a lot of crime, into a lot of unhappiness, uh, into rising rape statistics. For example, in Sweden, we see that 96. 0.5% of rapes are committed by migrants. These are unacceptable facts. We have to do something about this. And the solution, I think, is a change of mentality amongst the European youth. That's what we try to do with Schild and Vrinde. We try to uh, strengthen the European youth mentally, but also physically. We try to make them more confident, to make them proud of who they are. Yeah. Because in order for, for, for us to be able to defend our heritage and our identity, we first have to realize it's there to realize we are Flemish, we are European. Absolutely. That's what we try to do. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And a lot of people don't even know who are the Flemish people. So <laughs> you have to explain a little bit of that history for people. Well, the Flemish are the, the Dutch speaking part of Belgium. Belgium was actually kind of created by accident. It's not a real country, as Nigel Farage has said multiple times in the European Parliament. He's completely right about that. Belgium isn't really working. It's actually a European Union, but on a, on a much smaller scale. So the Flemish are the Dutch speaking northern part of Belgium. We're actually a majority in Belgium, but that doesn't mean that we have control over the politics. Quite the opposite. Uh, we aren't able to get a, a right wing uh, policies in Belgium, even though the majority of Flemish, over 70%, vote for center to right wing parties. We still get uh, mostly a socialist uh, policy at the national level, at the federal level. But the Flemish um, overall are quite right-wing. They are not uh, pro-migration, not pro-mass migration. They really feel that we have taken enough illegal migrants, enough refugees in Belgium, and they want to, they want to change this. Now, are you connecting with other groups in, in Belgium outside of the Flemish people who are feeling the same thing? If you're talking about the Walloons, uh, yes, we get a lot of messages from them. Uh, even though we are Flemish nationalists, we believe that the Flemish should have their own nation state, should not be, uh, should not be ruled by a Belgian federal government, but should have its own self-determination and self-government. But still, we get a lot of positive message from, messages from Walloons because we are, we are fighting the same battle. We're fighting a battle for, for Europe, for European heritage. And that's uh, a battle that goes ab above borders. So what's next for your group? What do you have planned? We've got a lot of plans and a lot of great ambitions. If I look at it uh, back one year, when we founded Schild & Vrinde, we never thought that we would be uh, this far, that we would be this big in one year. So what I hope is to continue on this momentum, continue on this path. Right now, um, we went in one year from an organization that was just loose. We thought, let's do something to an organization. We have our own offices, our own employees. 
we are uh, reaching a thousand members and we even had to stop new registrations of members because uh, our administration just couldn't handle any anymore. So we're growing exponentially. We have a lot of influence on politics. We have a lot of great actions and we will continue to do so in the coming year. Yeah, I was looking at your group. You have a lot of uh, good looking people, good looking, fit, healthy, you know, just on point. And I think that that's great because that's only going to attract more. Now, do you also have a lot of women part of your group or is it mostly men at this point? We do. Well, it's mostly men and we, we don't have any complexes about that. Sure. Politics just seems to be more for men. Sure, of course. Yeah. More, yeah. more interested in politics. Now, that doesn't include all men or all women, <laughs> but it's just the fact that men are generally more interested in politics. That's right. So That's right. Uh, we have people from all different backgrounds, migration backgrounds, people who are, who are gay, straight, people uh, who are women, men. We don't care about that. If you support our positive plan for Flanders and for Western Europe, then you're welcome. Yeah, true diversity, right? We have all the diversity we need. We don't need to import in all these uh, people from Africa and the Middle East, right? Correct, correct. <laughs> well, Dries, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and I think you're doing a great job. And you definitely have what it takes. I'm, I'm hopeful for you. I think that you're going to go, go far and get a lot done. So keep up the good work. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks for watching and thanks to all those who monetarily and spiritually support Red Eyes. People like us, media outlets like ours, who speak out against mass immigration and the rapid demographic replacement of Europeans, wherever they are, are under attack. Leftists are trying to squeeze us out, so we need your continued support. You can sign up for a membership at RedIceMembers.com to access exclusive material and help support us. You can also donate. Links are provided in the description below. You can also buy a t-shirt from yours truly at lanaslama.com. We love you all. Thanks for the support. A lot more coming up. See you next time.